Hello YouTube, Chrome Freak here. Okay, the M1 carbine bolt. <laughs> okay, we've done, we did the trigger group in the last video. The next piece we're going to do is the bolt right here. Then we'll be doing the magazine and changing out the recoil spring. There's nothing wrong with the guide rod, it's all good. So that's gonna be on the next video, which is going to be right directly after this one. But what we're gonna be changing here on the bolt is the um, ejector spring and the extractor spring. I, I believe this, the spring and the extractor here is pretty weak. And I think that was causing a little bit of the problems I was having. But I think the main issue really is the magazine spring is very, very weak. I check it, but well, I got a five rounder in the other room. It's very strong. And I check it against this 30, which is also very strong. And this is just really weak. So that, I believe this was probably 95% of the problem and maybe the extractor spring being the, the, the other 5%. It's not real weak, but I know this, this rifle has had many rounds through it, I'm sure. And I could tell. I've not taken this bolt down. I have taken many M1 carbine bolts down, but never this one. They do make a tool that you could buy. It's roughly $30 to $35, and it really makes taking this bolt down easy. This is one of the more difficult bolts to take down just simply because of design. There's, it's, it's a very easy, what we're doing is very easy. Actually doing it gets a little difficult because everything is just so small and tight is the way I should phrase it. But basically what we're going to be doing, located right here, hoping you can see it, that is your ejector right there and you can compress it as you can see, that's a spring. This is your extractor. Underneath, right here in this lip, is a little uh, plunger that's on this spring right here. This little baby spring. Compre what you got to do is you got to compress. You got to get use kind of use two screwdrivers. You got to compress that plunger and spring in at the same time, prying <laughs> out and up. It's basically straight up. So you're going to be prying this direction right here on the extractor and it will simply come straight out. But it's not that simple because you must defeat that spring and plunger. And another um, little tip I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of duct tape here in just a second and we're going to put it right over the top here. And the reason I'm going to do that is because once you got the plunger down and you start to take the extractor off, once it clears that plunger, that ejector spring with its plunger will shoot 40 feet from where you're sitting. I'm not kidding you, it's under a lot of pressure and it's gonna go. So if you're lucky enough, you'll find it. And worst case scenario, it might be sticking out of your eyeball. It will come out of there with some authority, I promise you. So to combat that, I'm just gonna take a little piece of duct tape. And that might even assist actually in getting my fingers a little bit out of the way. It's gonna be hard for you to see. I'm gonna apologize right now in front. It's gonna be very hard for you to see what I'm doing here, but I'm gonna to try to explain it the best I can. And, um, and we'll do the best you can so you can see. But as you can see, what I did was I, I put the duct tape over, but, but still left the extractor exposed. So hopefully, I won't have to worry about the ejector spring losing it, or the plunger. In this case, I got the spring, it's the plunger I'd be, um, I'd have to reorder it, and I, I really don't want to do that. So <laughs> let's be safe. We'll put the tape over it. I suggest you do the same thing. Now, if obviously somebody who does these all the time will buy that tool, it's worth it for them to buy that tool. For me, somebody who might take this bolt down once a year, I'm usually going to do it in there on a vise. But once again, right here, this is my little gig on YouTube where I do things with basic tools and show you guys that you can do it. With a little bit of um, knowledge and a little bit of willpower, we can get this done with basic tools right here at your table, if you like, if you don't have a garage. But obviously, the easiest thing to do would be the tool. The second easiest thing to do would be a vice. <laughs> but no, we're going to do it the hard way. But, you know, what fun would the video be doing it any other way? So let's get to work. Let's do this real quick. I've had this come apart in literally seconds, and I've had it take me five or ten minutes. If it takes a while to do... I will edit it out because I'm not going to sit here and have you watch 10 minutes of me trying to, you know, push the plunger down and get the extractor off. But I'll leave the important parts in, like pushing out the extractor and all that. And I'll be honest and I'll tell you, hey, it took me this long. But you might see us do it here in two seconds. 
I have done it in literally seconds, like I said, sometimes. And other times it takes a while. But I'm trying to think on how I can do this here with you still seeing it. Uh, by the way, if you could hear, that's the way it's, a, it's supposed to sound with the firing pin in there. It's a free-floating firing pin, and that is normal sound. So remember that. When you put it back together, we'll talk about that more. Okay, I guess I'm going to go ahead and try to put a screwdriver in this direction. God, I'm trying to do this and think how you guys could see better, but it's really kind of hard. If you could see, I learned to use my hands in weird ways doing these videos. I'm going to try to push down with a smaller screw, screwdriver onto the plunger at the same time with my thumb here. Push down on the screwdriver to get the extractor out. Let's see how this works. Not sure, guys. I can do this a lot easier without having to worry about filming it, but I, I really want you to see it, so let's see what I can do here. Here we go. Okay, let's try a different screwdriver here. I did move at that time, but I didn't get it down where I need it. I think this screwdriver is going to be a little bit too big also. I'm going to have to find something a little bit smaller to get in here with. It's going to have to be this guy, I think. I think. Or I might have to change the way I'm doing this and just get down on the table like this where I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay. I was able to compress it, but because I don't have another screwdriver in there, I'm not able to take the extractor out. So let's try it this way. Oh, I almost had it, guys. Like I said, you want to order the tool, you can do that. It, would, it makes life a lot easier. This comes right apart in literally seconds. But I've done this in seconds without a camera here and worrying about getting it on film. And I know you can't see right now with my stupid finger in the way, but it is what it, there it is. Okay, okay. I'm about to defeat it right here. I've got the plunger now. The plunger is actually resting on the lip of the extractor. So it wasn't so bad. Now hopefully I'll, I, I won't lose what I have here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do what I said. And I'm gonna get the extractor up and out. There it is. Now you simply pull the extractor out just like so. Let's go ahead and take out the plunger and the extractor spring. There's a little plunger, you can see how small it is. And there's the spring. And you can see how small that little plunger is too. And it's also got a little, God, it's so hard, it's gonna be hard for you guys to see. But it's almost like a 90 degree on this side, or I'm sorry, like a 45 degree on this side, and then straight down right here on the lip, there's a 90 degree. It's got a little lip right here. I'm resting this on and pushing on. When it goes back in, it has got to be this direction. I will show you that. And the extractor actually slips over to 45 and it locks down into that 90 de degree cut on the plunger. So let's get this out of the way. Go ahead and pull out your firing pin. Just give it a quick cleaning. Not too bad. Thought it'd be a lot dirtier than that, to be honest with you. Not too bad, though, guys. I'm not going to worry about really cleaning it much here. Let's just go ahead and get this replaced because I don't want to waste your time. I can take it apart and clean it on my own a different, a different time, but I will give it a quick wipe down here. Oh, yeah. There's... Okay, a little plunger. Okay, it's that simple, guys. Now we're going to take the tape off of here. And there should not be any spring tension because we have now got the firing pin out and the extractor off, and there's not. You can see the um, ejector just pops right up there. There's no, not a lot of tension on it right here. Just grab it and pull it right out, just like so. Then we will separate that, the spring, from this plunger. That fits in there nicely. I wish that this one did. It don't, though. It, um... And most of them that I've ever, in fact, none of them, always on this extractor spring, this little plunger just kind of rests there. And that makes life a little bit difficult too. But this one really locked in nicely on the ejector spring. So these are the two old springs, the ejector spring, extractor spring, let's bring in the new ones. 
These are brand new, by the way, from Military Surplus. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put the, the plunger back into your ejector spring, which these springs are horribly greased. I should degrease these, but I just don't want this video to be forever. This is simply cosmoline. That's all this is. It's not rust or dirt. It's just grease. Wow. Okay. Sorry, guys. Okay. Let's get this back in. And it's very hard to get in. And by the way, I've never changed the, the um, ejector. I have changed an extractor spring, but never ejector. This is the first. And I sure don't want to go in there. I go in this side very easy, but I'm wanting it to put it in the tight side. So it stays in there. So I don't want to bend the spring up, but at the same time, I want to get it in. And I may cut some of this out too. I'm not sure. If I fight this much longer, I will. But you okay, YouTube. <clears throat> Sorry about that. My finger's getting kind of dirty too. All I did was I took a screwdriver and kind of went in between the little springs and I opened them up just a little bit. It was very tight. And it was very hard to get this on. I had to use a pair of pliers. I had to hold this, open the little springs up a little bit, like I said, and force it in. And that's all it was, was forcing it back on. So the ejector is now, the plunger and spring are now together. So let's go ahead and let's take the extractor back out here. Our plunger and extractor spring are still in place. And this could be a pain in the butt because it wants to fall. I promise you it does. And this is where you wish you had an extra <laughs> an extra arm or a vise. Okay, firing pin is still in. We put that in first. Make sure it's pushed all the way in. What I'm gonna do is I'm because I'm not using a vise, I'm gonna try to hold it down on the table. I'm gonna rest the extractor in and push it till it's down onto the plunger from the ex, ex, <laughs> the extractor. I'm going to take something and I'm going to push the ejector spring all the way in. You have to do that, and that half moon has to be turned in the proper direction, like so, the U toward the, the extractor. So when you push it in, you will defeat that spring, and then we'll work on the little plunger there. So simply just take, I need something a little bit bigger here. Push the ejector in just like that. I don't want to lose it, so what I'm going to do, because I'm holding it, the only thing that's holding this right now is the thumb pressure, my thumb pressure, and I wish, and I didn't mess it up. I'm going to take that tape, and I'm going to put it back over, just in case I lose it. Now here's where you need a very small screwdriver again, and I'm trying to figure out which screwdriver here would be the best one to do that with. I'm going to try to use the big one here, well I've got a feeling I'm going to need this little guy. I'm gonna use this little guy here again. I'm gonna push in that extractor spring and plunger, which wants to come out. And at the same time, I'm using my thumb and I'm just going to put pressure with my thumb, pushing this extractor in. Okay. And the thing is, it's just so dang tight. It is really, really tight. You know what, this little, um, no, I think it's going to be too fat. This, I think this is the best screwdriver I got for the job. Unfortunately, it's a little bit big. But this is simply just force right here. You got to get the plunger in. At the same time, you got to be pushing that extractor in. Make sure I didn't lose this ejector spring. It's still down where it's supposed to go. I know you can't see it, but neither can I. <laughs> okay, I'm about to lose the plunger. And I got the plunger all cattywampus now. This is not, this is why if you're going to do this a lot, I would recommend you buy the tool. However, we're not going to do it a lot and I'm not going to spend the money on the tool. That's just me. You might feel differently, but that's the way I feel about it. I'm not going to take, this is a little screwdriver right here. This might work right here. But I'm going to have to get that in and that thing wants to come out so bad. Let's give her a shot again. Okay, 
push that in, push it down. Okay, we're gonna get it this time, I know we are. There it is. There it is. Wow. <laughs> Guys, it could just be really frustrating sometimes. Okay, take the duct tape off. Now we want to make sure we clean that up. We don't want no sticky part from the duct tape there. Okay, real quickly also, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the magazine. And um, just check it out. Change the spring in it. Make sure everything's good. Okay, let's do this. Just kind of let it pick it up. And at the same time, slide out like so. It's got a little little um, lip on the bottom to catch right there. Keep your finger over it. Okay. It fits in just like it looks, just right there. Perfect. I have the spring sitting just the way it should be, right there. And um, I'll tell you what, this newer spring here looks a little bit thicker, too, the spring itself. You can see I'm getting kind of dirty working on the bolt here. Let's go ahead and get the new spring in. Oh, yeah, much tighter. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Okay. Now let's go ahead and we're going to put it back together. Just like so. It's that simple and that quick and that easy. Oh yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely a lot stronger than the old one was. Okay. We got the bolt. The extractor spring. The ejector spring is changed. And the magazine spring is changed. Here's the two old springs right here. Take them. I'm going to put them into a bag and label them. Because there's nothing wrong with them. And we will keep them as spares. Now, the, I, do, I do believe the extractor spring is weak, but I'm still believing that most of the problem is this magazine. But anyway, it's been fun. Guys, this is challenging to do because it's so small. And, you know, if it's something that you plan on doing a lot of, I highly recommend you do buy the tool. But if you're like me and like a little bit of a challenge, <laughs> here it is. And like I said, if you look at it, it's not a complicated job. It's a frustrating job. And trying to do it where you can see is makes it even worse. So, I mean, I could take it in there and put it in a vise, and I know I can do it in two seconds. But once again, it's one of them jobs I've done like this right here at a table, and I've done it on the first shot. And I've also sat for 20 minutes pulling my hair out. So, it is what it is. I thank you guys for watching. We're going to end this video. I'll pick it up in the second video where we're going to put everything back together with the new recoil spring and all that and we'll have them got the rifle in working condition okay we'll see you guys um on the next part thank you good night youtube